I use system status on the IP office system. First thing we'll need to do is to open a browser of your choice and then enter the IP address which you will get from your system administrator of the IP office main system. So on our system it's 192.168.2.133. Press enter. We'll get to this screen and now we're going to choose system status. It'll take a little while to load Java, but it did it pretty quick. All right. Uh, typically, our login name is administrator, and the password is the same thing. So we'll cut and paste it in just like so. We have to make sure that this is our IP office once again. Don't change the services base TCP port. Let it be the same, and then we'll log in. The first thing we like to look at is active calls. That tells us who's on the line, what they're doing. So if you have six people talking to people outside of the company or having private conversations between each other, extension to extension calls, you would see six lines of data here. We're just going to make one call to another person and that'll show up as one line of data. Let's give it a try. All right, we can see that extension 201, I'm sorry, we can see that extension 202 has called extension 201, and they're connected or talking right now. Maybe I'll put one of them on hold and see what happens. You can see that the call is now held, uh, and that's the status of it, holding and held. If we want even more information about this particular call, we can double click it, and it shows even more. We're not recording it. Uh, it's not being sent out to a cell phone. It's not going between two of our locations. If we had two IP offices talking to each other, for example. And now we're going to, now we will take the call and pick it up again. And now we're talking again. It's connected. It's not being held. We can disconnect that from here if we want, but we typically don't like to disconnect people. But you know what? In this instance, we will, since we're just testing. And then to go back, we go back, and that'll get us to our main screen to see if there's any other calls that are currently happening. But there are not. A call can also be if you're um, calling the voicemail system, for example. So let's do that. No new messages. To get messages, press 2. So you can see I'm talking to the mailbox. I can call with my other phone and do the same thing. So you can see there's two calls connected talking to voicemail. In other words, they're retrieving their messages. We'll hang them both up. And they're gone. So that's how you can view what's happening in your system at any current time. Maybe you have eight phone lines and you want to see if all your eight phone lines are being taken up. Maybe that'll give you some information that you might need to order more phone lines. And if you see, you know, seven, six or seven lines here taken up or maybe eight, you'll know it's time to order a few more phone lines because uh, people will be getting waiting for line messages in their screen. One of the first places you look is alarms. If there's any problems with the system, alarms will be in this section. You can also see the last time, if you just click on alarms right here, you'll see the last time the system was rebooted was at 2.10.2016. So that's actually a couple of weeks ago, which is fine. But if the system hiccuped and something went wrong and it rebooted overnight, you can verify what the date is. And if it was only last night, you'll know you have an issue where the system keeps on rebooting for some reason. If we expand the alarms, we can drill down to the ones that have the alarm because they'll be uh, shown with a yellow exclamation point. For example, service. So it's telling us that it can't load the hold music source file. Something must have happened to that or the system isn't configured to retrieve it properly. And also uh, we tried to hook up a VOIP extension, a network extension for example, and it did not have the right password. So it's showing that somebody's trying to hook up a phone, but they don't know what's happening and also what the extension was. So we might be able to go there and help them out, for example. Okay, another problem is we had a security issue. 
Not quite sure what that is, something we can look up in the future. Quality of, ser quality of service is uh, if, for example, you had a uh, voice over IP phone connected and there were problems with the network and the call quality was extremely bad, that would show up here and show you when uh, the last date of the problem was with the congestion, what the device was, and what the settings were, what kind of uh, information uh, details you had for jitter and round trip delay. This is very useful for your network administrator to troubleshoot issues with poor quality on voice over IP phones. Let's close the alarms. Trunks. Trunks shows us the status of our outside phone lines, if they're connected, if they're being spoken on, that kind of thing. It shows us that we have four phone lines connected to this particular IP office and what, uh, how many are currently being used. They're all available for use right now. It also would show us with a colored pie chart um, the quantity of inbound calls, outbound calls, and calls that were dropped. There's no alarms on them also, so that's fine. Extensions gives us a list of all the various extensions that are hooked up in our system. We only have a few connected here, as you can see by the chart. Um, but this gives you a bird's eye view of what's connected and what is not connected. Only the ones that are connected will have their names showing. And then you can drill down further and see uh, what's happening with their lines, if they have their do not disturb on, for example, which is something that sometimes happens and people say, hey, my phone isn't ringing. You can drill down into their extension. And if it says DN, do not disturb on, you know, they just have to turn it off. It's very easy to help them with that. You can also see how many messages are in their voicemail here. So it's a very handy tool to look into somebody's phone to see what kind of issues they might have. If their forwarding is on, obviously, their phone won't be ringing as well. So we can do that with various extensions if there's a phone plugged in. As you can see, these are the only four that are plugged into the system at the moment. Okay, continuing down. Uh, the system will tell us what kind of components are connected to our phone system. So this is more for administrative use when you're first hooking a system up, what modules and daughter boards and things of that nature you have plugged into your system. Right now this system has uh, four slots on it. The IP500 has four slots and we only have something plugged into the first slot and the second slot. And then there's a daughter board connected to the second one for our phone, four phone lines. Memory cards. We only have one main memory card in here that has the memory in it. And these are our different uh, modules that we show, show up on the main system, slot one and slot two. We can drill down a little bit deeper, but we're not going to do that right now. Trunks, we like to use active calls. Resources tells us uh, the memory allocation and what's currently being used. For data, for voice, this is all related to uh, your voice over IP phones. And this is related to your voicemail, how many people can consecutively log in and access the voicemail or the auto attendant. This is a small system, so we only have two possible people that could log in at any given time and access the voicemail or uh, auto attendant. Most of the systems have 128 conference bridges. You'll never reach that number in most uh, situations, but at least it gives you an idea there. Configuration, we have a lot of space left on our cards, so we don't have to worry about the uh, running out of memory for uh, various configuration and uh, number of users uh, in the database and that type of things. Time, it shows us if we're getting our time properly. Uh, we are on this one. Uh, so the system is being uh, kept up to date by an external time server. Licenses shows us what type of licenses are installed that we've bought from Avaya. Uh, this one's showing us we have uh, two licenses bought for voice over IP phone systems. We've upgraded it to release 9.1, and it's essential edition, which means that we have our onboard voicemail and auto attendant. Directory shows us what uh, names are in the system right now that we've previously assigned and what their extension numbers are. And um, this will also show us uh, if it's a user, a hunt group, whatever we might have that's a number associated with the system. It'll also show us any remote systems that are part of the uh, directory. That could be another site, and then it would actually show up under uh, a different site. Under it's, This one is just local users. Okay. Control unit. The audit shows us what has happened to the system whenever we've updated the system or changed the configuration. It gives you an idea who changed it and when. In case somebody uh, might have been changing your system configuration, this is a way to find out what's happening with that. Voicemail will show us all the mailboxes in one place, and we can see if there's anybody having any new messages, any red messages, how many might be saved. 
and also what their email address is. So it's a nice bird's eye view of uh, telling you if people have been picking up their voicemail messages or not. Sometimes you'll go to a system and you'll find out there's um, 50 messages in the main uh, voicemail, which is basically their general delivery messages, and nobody's picking up those messages, which is not good. IP network shows us uh, what the settings are between different sites. Nothing that's in this system. And locations is similar if you have uh, different locations that are administered, but this one only has one. So that's a brief overview of the IP Office system status and what it can do. Uh, we like the active calls. That helps a lot. Uh, and drilling down into the extensions also tells us what's happening on a particular phone, which is very handy, uh, like we showed you here. And then the alarms tells us what type of problems are happening in our system, and we can drill down deeper to see what, that, what that's all about. And that's it for this uh, particular tutorial and overview of the IP Office system status tool. And we log off and we'll see you next time.